this video, we'll be looking at the uh, structure and the function of the adrenal gland. Now, the adrenal gland is actually found on top of the kidney, right? And uh, what you need to know is the, the two parts uh, of the adrenal gland that makes it up and also what each part does. So if we actually do a cross-section of the adrenal gland, it will look something like this. So it's mainly made up of the two different parts, uh, the part on the outside and the part on the inside. So the part on the outside is called the adrenal cortex, and the bit on the inside is called the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal cortex uh, mainly gets uh, signaled or controlled by hormones that are sent from the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland is an example of a, an endocrine gland. It's almost like the master gland because it is able to produce loads of different types of hormones on its own. And it's also able to produce hormones to have a, a secondary effect on other endocrine glands and tell them to make more hormones. And the adrenal cortex or the adrenal gland is one of them. Uh, specifically, the adrenal cortex releases steroid hormones. So in, in the previous video, I talked about steroid hormones are lipid-based and they're able to diffuse across the cell surface membrane uh, by simply diffusion. And specifically uh, here, you need to know about three general types of steroid hormones that are released by the adrenal cortex. The first one that we'll look at is called the uh, glucocorticoids. Um, one way to remember is that uh, it starts with the prefix gluco, so it has something to do with glucose. So there are actually different types of glucocorticoids, but to summarize, uh, they generally can regulate various things. They can regulate blood pressure and also glucose and protein metabolism. So if you think about gluco, glucose metabolism would be one way to think about it. Uh, other types of glucocorticoids can also suppress inflammatory responses. And that's why sometimes if you are having a more serious inflammation in the body, uh, your GP might uh, prescribe some um, steroids for you to take, which uh, perhaps do the sum of the functions of glucocorticoids in suppressing those responses to make you feel a little bit better. So that's glucocorticoids. Another type of steroid hormones produced by the adrenal cortex is called the mineral corticoids. Again, thinking about the prefix here would be mineral. So minerals, or sometimes can be called as salt, so they are the ones that maintain the salt concentration uh, in your bloodstream to control the blood pressure as well. So mineral corticoids. And the third type of steroid hormones that can be released is called androgens. And these are actually sex hormones with a very little effect on generally how the body works. And they may be a little bit more prominent or have a little bit more effect during menopause in women, um, generally speaking. To summarize briefly on this part, the adrenal cortex is the outer layer of the adrenal gland. They, uh, the adrenal cortex releases steroid hormones mainly when they are stimulated by hormones from the pituitary gland. Um, and they can release three major types of steroid hormones called glucocorticoids, which can regulate glucose uh, metabolism and suppresses the inflammatory responses, uh, or mineral corticoids, which maintain salt concentration, and androgens, which are sex hormones with small effects. Now, in the case of the adrenal medulla, they can release peptide hormones when they are stimulated or signaled by the sympathetic uh, nervous system. Usually, this comes into play during a stress response. And namely, there are only two types of peptide hormones that you need to know. And you may already be familiar uh, with them already in the first place. Adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now, even though uh, it sounds like they're very similar, they're both have basic of adrenaline, uh, they do slightly different things. But both of them do all of the stress responses that you might be familiar with. So the adrenaline specifically can do two things. Uh, they can increase the heart rate, uh, as in how quickly your heart beats. And also it can uh, increase your blood glucose level in a way to uh, make sure your uh, organs get more uh, glucose for respiration for energy. Uh, now, noradrenaline can also actually uh, increase the heart rate, but other than that, mainly it does the other responses uh, for stress response. So for example, it can dilate the pupils so uh, in your eyes, so you, get, uh, you allow more light in, therefore you can see more clearly, especially in the dark. 
And another thing is that they can uh, cause the vessels to non-essential organs to actually constrict slightly. So this actually limits the blood flow to those particular organs during a stress response. Um, so for example, one of them would be like the digestive system or the stomach or the small intestines. Thinking about in the case of a stress response or a fight or flight response, you should want to have all of your energy or attention directed to preparing your body to fight against that uh, th uh, threat or to run away from that threat. And you don't really want your body to be spending energy on digestions or absorbing uh, nutrients at that point. You will be wanting to use up the nutrients rather than just simply storing it up. So that's why they would direct more of the blood towards, let's say, the muscles and the brain rather than to the other organs that are not exactly essential during a fight or flight response. So those are the actions for no, no adrenaline. Just to summarize this part here, the adrenal medulla is the middle part of the adrenal gland and they can release peptide hormones when they are stimulated by the sympathetic nerve, uh, nervous system for a stress response. Namely, there are two types of peptide hormones that they can make would be adrenaline and noradrenaline, uh, which they can do various different things like increasing the heart rate, increasing blood pressure, dilating pupils and uh, redirecting blood flow to more essential organs to help them respond to that stress signal. It's important to remember actually um, later on when we look at coordinated responses, we will see how the nervous system and the endocrine system both work together to enable the body to uh, respond to a stress signal. And this is the structure and the function of the adrenal cortex.